Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We're moving into our first major conversation for today. And of course, it's a Friday. So we have Wale Scott joining us. And we're going to be speaking about, um, you know, something we had mentioned a couple of days ago, Choma Ajumwa, who initially, of course, uh, came out to make claims that the federal government had abandoned her and all those old promises that uh, had been made to her after she won the Olympic gold medal had not been fulfilled. The legacy government has taken that upon itself and, uh, of course, uh, fulfilled some of those promises. So we're going to be talking, you know, extensively, not just about her now, but about rewarding sports and rewarding Nigerian sportsmen and women. Uh, good morning, Wale Scott. Good morning. Sir. Good morning. Good morning, Alexa. So um, it's, it's good news, it's, I guess. It's something that uh, should be celebrated. Um, you know, she finally has been able to get, um, you know, the thing that she should have gotten more than 20 years ago. Um, it's a three-bedroom apartment. So, <laughs> so you're among those who, who think that we should celebrate with her. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not popping champagne right now. I'm not, but um, do you know how many people have been... Um, I was supposed to have one of um, the Atlanta 96 gold medalists in Atlanta um, on the show today. He couldn't make it. But uh, he hasn't received anything yet. And I can count, not with my fingers and my toes now, I can draw a long list of people who have been promised. It's unfortunate that um, Nigeria sees the fact that the only opium, the only high that Nigerians have is sports. So the politicians tend to use it as a, a leverage for them to actually get there eventually. So when these people win things, everybody's happy, we're all popping champagne, and then they make them promises. And they never, ever. I know I know, I know, a coach, his name is Paul Hamilton, I think I said it here before. His name is Paul Hamilton, um, I used to take him newspapers. He won something then, with the other 17 then. He was made promises. Um, he had um, a cancer in his first leg, his left leg. So it was cut off, and his second leg too was cut off, and then eventually died. And his wife is still hustling every day to Abuja, Lagos, trying to get the promises made. Chioma and Jua, I am very happy. But at least the government, for some reason, are uh, I, 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 looking like, okay, we made you a promise, we're giving you, but Chioma and Jua is just one out of millions of Nigerians who have been promised. Um, I, I know for one that um, a particular British footballer, his name is Paul Gascoigne, they call him Gaza. Yeah. When Gaza had a drinking problem, he was an alcoholic, and um, there was a fund arranged for footballers in case they had problems and everything. And it was from the funds they were taking the money from to actually After retirement. take care of Gaza. You know, and, and Gaza is doing very well right now. And, and um, Chairman Juwa, I'm happy for her, yes. But um, what about the other ones? So, so let me let me understand where you know where you're going. Uh, should the love and the uh, and the um, energy that you're expecting should it be to every single Nigerian sports person, or are there certain heroes that Nigeria should just never forget? Because anybody can compete in the Olympics, um, you know, and not win any medal. You know, they would still be able to call themselves, you know, uh, Nigerian sportsmen or you know women. Um, so, do you do you want this um, attention to every single sportsman and woman for the, who has represented Nigeria, or um, are you just expecting that there are certain heroes of Nigeria's sports that should never be forgotten? Don't get me wrong, Osaroge, and answer, please. I believe our Nigerian sportsmen, African sportsmen, are very wasteful. I agree, and um, most of them don't have any reason to be begging anyone for anything right now. What do you mean when you say they are very wasteful? They are very wasteful because um, I remember a particular, I won't call any names, because I already might know you by now. I, I know a particular footballer at a point who is not doing very well right now, um, who actually bought a aeroplane. Yeah, bought a jet at, at some point, yes. At, at a point, and then he had to say, you know, they are very wasteful. I know a particular Nigerian footballer now who is a personal person of mine who actually wants to buy vintage cars. I remember that um, when Austin J.G. Okocha went to a second tier team in the English Premier League. The footballers, his colleagues in the club, said they had never seen a Bentley in their car park before. That's how wasteful we are. You know, the, the, the other colleagues didn't think they had any reason to buy a car that big, but our guys feel they have to buy it. Yes, but you see, when you, you, you come to that, um, Osarode, um, if in a normal society, 
in a normal climb. If our sportsmen and women don't have problems and we don't have poverty in the land, we won't have to be talking about helping them and giving them houses and everything, really. Um, the person I would have called on the show today has been promised a house since 96. He was the goalkeeper in 96, and he hasn't got his house yet or anything yet. And um, he will come on the show very soon, um, probably next Friday, and tell you us about how much he has gone how much he has spent on going to and fro to try and get his house. So Wally Scott, should the conversation be about the promises that government officials make to sportsmen that they fail to fulfill, or just generally about their welfare? Because they seem like two different things here. If the person of Chioma John was promised a house, like other people who won, and she didn't get it, that's a different issue than, of course, we know that is the issue of, you know, underfunding, the fact that they're not being taken care of, they're sick and there's nobody to, to, to take care of them. That issue exists. But looking at this particular issue of being promised and, you know, the government reneges on that promise, really, how, where do you think this all comes from? Because in particular, Chema Jumwa's case, she says the military governor says it's because she's not from Lagos. So for other, you know, yes, that's, that's exactly what yeah, it is. Yeah, I do. Yes. I do, I do. So for other people who have been promised and they didn't get anything, what has, has been the reason behind that? I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, um, jokingly, this is, um, I'm humorous now. Um, when we were younger, we say, um, you make promises to girls, uh, girls make promises to guys in the heat of the moment. Mm. So I, I think the politicians tend to make these promises in the heat of the moment, in the celebration period, you know, just say things they probably don't have plans to do. This Chioma and Joa's gift, as happy as we, the sports family, are, that she's gotten the gift finally, I, I, she wasn't promised this gift like this year. Not by, by this government. Some people in this government now who are giving Chioma this were probably, probably in secondary school when yeah. she was promised this. You know? And so we're happy she's getting it. But what we're trying to say is that, um, yes, it's easy, it's convenient in the heat of the moment, in the midst of a celebration, to make promises. Our politicians just must learn. So see, Nigerians are beginning to understand that sports is the only opium that the, the country... The, There's also entertainment, even though sports is entertainment. Well, yeah, but you see, people... It, it's, it's easy for sports to actually... For you to use sports to actually get people. That's why you find out that it's convenient for the average politician across the world, not only in Nigeria, across the world, to actually, after getting a TV station, the next thing they want is to get a football club. Hmm. Yeah, Berlusconi, he had AC Milan, he had the big, biggest TV. You know, so it's, it's easy. And so in the course of us doing well, we tend to um, make promises. And what I'm begging is that thank you very much for Chioma and Jua. I hope the government can actually do more for other sportsmen who have been made promises. And then in the future, don't make them promises anymore. Because, yeah. yes, don't make any promises anymore. So I, I would also say, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy with, you know, the way that, you know, yes, she might be complaining, you know, today or eventually uh, she's been I'm uh, grateful the house. But I'm happy with um, the, the journey that she, her life has also uh, been on. You know, she basically um, didn't, after the Olympics, go back and go home and sleep. You know, she went back to the Nigerian police force. Uh, she's, she looks really, really good and, and really, really fit as a police officer there. Uh, but I would also, you know, ask uh, something. It, it, I, I don't know if American or British or Australian or Jamaican um, athletes um, win these awards and hope that they get houses back at home. Like, we, should we also remember the, you know, that you, you, you won these awards, you won these medals, and that should be the goal, you know, the pride in winning, not necessarily because of the house that you might get or the three million naira that your government might give you. So the, the reason behind competing in these um, sporting events, the reason behind winning the 4 by 100 meters is we also don't have a sports environment where you can get endorsements, sadly. 
Well, because I don't think Usain Bolt is waiting for. I said it. I said it earlier house. that unfortunately. Uh, yeah. So the, I just want to throw that in. I don't think you know any of these. And let's say in Africa. I don't think it, you know uh, Sami Kufo or any of all these people who have done phenomenally well for the for sports in their countries are waiting for their government to give them houses or give them five million um, you know naira uh, cash. Um, there is the possibility of them also getting endorsements that keep them going for a long time. There's a possibility of I mean Usain Bolt has numerous endorsements. Um, Israel Adesanya, the uh, boxer, has numerous endorsements also. So those should be I believe the things that you know we our athletes should start looking to, you know to doing. And um, not winning um, medals and coming down only just, just just to cheap in there, Osage, I don't think that, you know, artists <coughs> or I beg your pardon, sportsmen mm. compete to of course get houses. This is a promise that was made to her. Right? I think to I many think, well, to many of them. But you see, that question only vindicates me now. Because like I said earlier, you were asking what I mean. And I'm like, they are very wasteful. But I also said earlier that in St. Lines, Nigeria Sorry, it's not St. Lines. There's poverty in the land. Yeah. And um, these people, in, in other countries, it's enough to, wear, to put that medal in your, on your shelf yeah. and say, I've got this for my country. You know? But here, we, don't want, we want a little more. People are poor. You know, really, really. really. I, I told you about somebody, um, Paul Hamilton, a few minutes ago, and I said, um, I know what he went through. He was really, when you say the word poor, he was really poor. And this was a guy who actually played for Nigeria, coached the under 17 at the points, and he died like that. But, and, and his wife was still going to and through to her. She hasn't gotten the money till now. You know, where I'm going through is um, they are very wasteful, first off. And then secondly, I said it on this show a few weeks ago. I have noticed something. I, I, I don't know if it's only me. I've noticed something. Most times in the Super Eagles, Nigeria Super Eagles, as the case study now, the only guys who put in their all in all in their game, who do everything to make sure we try and win our games for the Super Eagles, are the guys who grew up abroad. There's this thing about playing for your country when you grow up ab ab abroad. In Nigeria here, it's about the monetary games. See, that's why it's totally different from, from Chowa and Joa or for her because other people, you know, began to get dual citizenship. But she said that it was the it was through the Nigerian police force that she got that opportunity to, to represent Nigeria and she was going to come back and represent the country. So another um, question I, I wanted to ask you about this is, if we're talking about how sportsmen are poor in Nigeria, how they finish playing, represent their country in the highest level and, and they money. come back... I, I don't, um, I don't think well, I would say I would not exactly agree with the wasting money because the issue is not about their spending habits or their money management, really. <laughs> to be honest, it's this... Hey, but the end point is if you are I'm poor, coming, are you going to tell him how to spend his money? Exactly. If, like, if you make so much money and really you are poor at the end of the opinion. day, can't we question the money management? What I'm trying to say is this, it happens right? To the best of them. It happens to Paul what Gascoigne, I, like you mentioned. I mean, it's just like that <laughs> presenter <laughs> on ASD. We could ask him that why didn't he manage his money well when he paid him so many months ago? You know, my issue here is, or my question is, <laughs> my question to you, um, Mr. Wally Scott, is this. If we're talking about how sportsmen are poor in Nigeria, then should we begin to have a reorientation to say sports is not exactly a full-time career? It should not be looked at as a full-time career. Yes. You should be a sportsman and have your business. Yeah. You should be a sportsman and mean the civil service. Yeah. Should that be the direction? Because sports cannot pay your bills. Now, um, there, are, there are two footballers. I'll use their, I'll call their names, Shegmo Degbami and Adokia Mislimaka. Adokia is a barrister, the lawyer. And Shegmo is doing very well as an accountant right now. And um, they've always consistently told the younger ones, guys, don't waste your money. At least while you are playing football, try and look for a career on the side. Not everyone will be as lucky as George Opongwe, who became Liberian president. Not everybody will be as lucky as that, you know? So make do. Sports will only last for a while. You can't be as lucky as Cristiano Ronaldo, who is at his peak as 35 or as Lionel Messi, who is at 34 and is still doing so well. We, we can't all be that lucky. You know, and, and the truth be said, yes, sports is not a full-time career. And um, I think what sportsmen and women should do now is to look at the fact that um, Adokia Mesimaka, Shegun Adekbami, we've got other play, uh, people like... See, I've told people all the time, Gary Neville, Paul Neville, Phil Neville, and the rest of them who are doing um, anal analysis today, are hustlers. If they had a career, they wouldn't have time to be hustling, going to go and present one thing for one person. 
But Shoma and Juma understood. Not, we can't all be like that. She understood that, listen, I am a policewoman. First of all, before I became an athlete. And if all is said and done and I finish this career, which will end as soon as possible, I will go back to be a policewoman. Shoma Ajuma, in case most of us do not know, was actually given a medal or something by the police force for arresting some a, a crime yeah, syndicate I remember that we've looking for for a while. You understand? This is not in athletic, athletics now. This is a person. A, a, a She's career. an assistant commissioner of police. She was actually <clears throat> given kudos by the police force for arresting a crime syndicate. And I'm sure these are the things that the government were seeing and saying, despite the fact that this girl did so well for us, she's gone back to her job and she's doing well on her job. Do you understand? So we need we can't to all be um, like that. What is called, basically, you, you're saying that we need to begin to change the conversation from what, what it is now because you find young Nigerians, young boys, who they, you know, they pick either school or sports. So we have to begin to change that narrative that it's not school or sports, it's you play your sports, you go to school, you build a career because sports can only last you a while. It might not even be school, Seth. It might not be school. At least while you are doing whatever sports you are doing, maybe you are a barber on the side or you are a fashion designer, or something, you know? So there's always... Just have a plan B. There must be... See, every... In life, I think, if you're watching a show right now, what we should be learning now is, let's leave sports out of it. Let's leave our jobs out of it. Let's all understand that our jobs will never pay enough of our bills. Never. They have to be exciting. They has to be. And Chioma Ajuma, one of the very few sharp ones who realized that, listen, I won't leave my job. I know a footballer, Pius Ikedia, that's his name, he was a sergeant in the police force, went to play football, did his best, the whole world knows him, we all know him, did he come back to the police force again? I think it also tells of Choma Jun's Choma Jun was humility because you know just like you mentioned the other one didn't come back. To, he didn't know, go back to his she job. didn't say, "Oh, why would I come back there? I'm 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 above all that." But she came back to her roots and she's still in the. And we know someone who died recently too, um, Sunday Bada. He was a sprinter like Choma and Juma. He used to be with the immigrations. After running and making so much plenty, plenty names and everything. Those are their personal decisions, you know. And exactly. If, if they, She's if just they, lucky. She made the right decision. Yeah, you know, but it doesn't mean that Pius Acadia is unlucky. Um, I didn't say that. Nobody knows where he is. Um, if he decides, oh, I'm not going to go back to the police force because I, I don't like being there in the first place. We've, 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 the Nigeria police force is not the best place. Do you so realize that this either. house... Uh, Vito that Agawa Chuma, was Chuma a police just officer, got, yes. Chuma, uh, uh, That Chuma Juma just got now. He goes beyond the house. We are, we, are, we are celebrating her today because she's done well for Nigeria. Almost like a redemption. We're actually, we're actually forgetting the house. The house is not even there. We're just remembering Choma Ajuma. Oh, and my daughter would ask me last night and was like, Daddy, who is Choma Ajuma? And it took me like 15 minutes to explain what she had done for us and all that with pride. Mm. So it goes beyond the house now. Also, really? we know that even still as far back as 2013, the Tunisia 94 team uh, were begging the Nigerian government to fulfill promises of houses. You know, also, as they announced that Chemajon will be getting a three-bedroom flat at the um, Raj Fashola House in the state of Nipori, yeah, they announced that they would also be getting um, houses. So this is great news for them, too. Yes, it is. Um, I, I think it's good that... Um, it, it, this thing goes beyond um, today. Now, more people will want to get involved in sports because they will be like, well, they were promised, it took a while, but now they're eventually doing it, maybe this will continue. I think the, the best thing that can happen to an individual ever in the world, I think the feeling is standing there and saying, this is Wale, this is Osarogi, this is Anissa from Nigeria, the winner. I think that's about it. Yeah. And these guys actually go there where our green, white, green. Whether they win or do well is not important to me. Like um, Sarge rightly mentioned, it, it does, rep, if you want to represent, uh, give them something, give all of them something. If you don't want to give, don't give. But Tunisia team was fantastic, and I, I think that um, they deserve this. Um, some of them don't even need the houses anymore. But at least they can boastfully tell their children or grandchildren, I got this house, I'm giving you this house, because I did something for Nigeria. 
Yeah, and, and that's, that's it also puts very, in, very puts important. It puts in lots of pride important. into the country. I, 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 I know a few friends who actually are Nigerians who have become Americans now. And they say, God bless America with so much pride. You know, and, and, and I want a situation where our grandchildren, even if we're not here anymore, can actually tell people and say, my daddy got this house because he played football for Nigeria. I think that's the spirit. That, that's, that's a good thing, that's you know, but, you know, I, I think we should, we should also, I think one thing that I think we've mentioned already is the using sports as a poverty alleviation um, um, program. Um, which it ne doesn't necessarily have to be all the time. Uh, there's too many Nigerians who go, go into sports simply because of uh, poverty. And that's why people like um, Didier Droba of Cote d'Ivoire, Samuel Etofis of Cameroon, have academies. But they most importantly have academies that have schools. And um, Samuel Etofis said um, last week or two weeks ago that if you don't pass in class, you don't get to remain in, in this school. You're not here for football alone. Yes, football is the major contention, but you must pass in class. And Drogba is doing the same thing too. Eto Fils is doing the same thing too in Cameroon. Um, the Liberian president, George Obongwe, yeah. doing the same thing in Liberia. So I, I think we some food, people are getting it right now. They actually they are footballers. They made all their money from football, but they are building academies that have schools. Sheikh Mwadebami has the same in Nigeria here in Ogun States. Same thing. If you don't do well in class, you don't play football or you leave the school. Yeah. So I think th they, they realize that, listen, there is life after football. There is life after sports. So while you are going to school, you also play football. So when football ends, and Shagwa I mean, will always tell you, listen, I played football at the highest level for Nigeria. You didn't get to go to the World Cup, yeah. But you played at the Nations Cup and everything, and he did very well. But he's an accountant, he's doing quite well now. And he's had, he has an academy that says, go to school. And play football. Um, yeah. So poverty alleviation is removed from this conversation now. When you realize that, listen, these guys are actually building schools not only for football, but for schooling too. And many won't exactly agree with that sports as a poverty elevation scheme idea. No, many because, won't. No, many, no, I'm, I'm coming. Won't. I'm coming because <clears throat> I, I, are you trying to say um, someone who is poor and has a passion for sports should... should I mean, what really is no. the national? We have a Chika Chukumerije, who is, who is a taekwondoist, who has got to, like, gone abroad to, to win medals for us. I think he has won bronze before or something. And every training he went through was from his own pocket and his father's pockets, who was a minister then. Yeah. But that's not the issue. The issue is that I know a lot of Nigerians. I am a sports presenter. I am a sports reporter. I'm a journalist. I, 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 I know a lot of guys out there. Go to this morning. Go to Wagege, go to Abuli Eba, go to Ikeja, go to Yanowuru, on that bridge right now. And there are boys who are training every day, hoping for a scout to come their way, and that's their meal ticket. And I know it's boys too, who their parents, women, their mothers, will give them food and say, eat now, relax more. And go and play ball. But what is wrong Maybe with that? I'm sorry. What is wrong with that? It's poverty it's alleviation now. <laughs> but they, but, but that's can, their way out. The question is, can they play? Well, that's the question. Can nobody, they play? I'm not a coach. I wouldn't doubt the fact that they are skilled. And they're poor. I mean, it doesn't. So no one is doubting the fact that they are skilled. Nigerians are built to play football. It is like Brazilians. So don't get it wrong. It doesn't matter whether you're poor or rich. If you can play, play. Yes, but what is the motivation behind playing? It's not because you have a passion for it. No, it is side by side with the fact that you need to lift your family out of poverty. Just play. That's why we have so many people who are, you know, 27 and have their ages. Let me say. Let me say. Let me say. I just mentioned Julius Agawa. Yes, he had been in the Nigerian police force. Let Eventually, me, I think it was 18 years when he played for Nigeria. That's after 20 years of Let me tell you a story. Kelechi Inacho's father looked for scouts. He was quite, he was doing well. Looked for scouts to come and watch his son play. They watched Kelechi play. Kelechi was, 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 was good then. Now he's better, he's better now. He was good then. And then while they were watching oh. Kelechi play, they saw Dele Alampasu, the goalkeeper. Who sold pure water? Then? Who sell pure water then? Saw him, and this guy's a good goalkeeper too. And I passed his luck. You know? So every mother, every young footballer in Yanopaja right now, in Yanowuru right now, is looking for that payday. Yes, they, are, they have the passion for it. Yes, they can play football. We are built to play football. But most importantly, bread. 
the bread. <laughs> I mean, that, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's the reason why you're wearing suit and tie and sitting here this morning. Bread. Don't you agree? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's yeah, all right. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. I, think, I think the moral lessons yeah. we can take from this is sportsmen shouldn't rely on just sports thank for survival. Thank you. And the government should Have, be better. Yes, and, and, and thank you, you very promises, much to the government for... Yes, Thomas, thanks yes, to the government, but then don't make promises and then just renege. In the heat of the moment, promises, yes. go ahead sports people, and fulfill it. To Asu, to Juson, to all of them. If Nigerian government promise, promise you anything, we're talking sports again. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying because we have spoken about these same field promises. The reason Asu might be going back on strike is because of field promises. Yeah, the reason why uh, doctors are threatening exactly. In the heat of the moment, these people just. Make promises. All right. Uh, anyway, we're still going to say that big thanks to the Lagos State government, yes, thank the, you very the person, much. especially of uh, Governor Babajide Sonwo. Who's, who's 56 now? Happy birthday. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. And yes, to all the media people, pressmen who put pressure, because remember we've been talking about um, this particular issue, especially when she granted that interview mm. to a radio station. That's where the story um, all kicked off. And it's a, it's a happy ending now. Yes. All right, we'll take a break here and we'll be right back to stay with us.